So chapter 12, part H, question number 22. Which one of the following is false? An agent's authority to act on behalf of the principal may arise. Right? Number one, expressly. Expressly mean clearly. Number two, contingently. Contingently mean continues after specified time. Third, by implication. Implication means likely consequence. Like implied, right? By ratification. You know right ratification, right? You know? Afterwards, right? So false is contingently. Contingently basically mean you know our class time is what? Nine to one, right? But our class will continue after this specific time, right? <laughs> it has nothing to do here, right? So there are three authorities express, implied, and the apparent. Okay? So it's number two. And then from 22 to 47. 47 you don't have, but it's the same question. It's the same question. You don't have, I know. But 47 is the same question and same answer number two contingently. Okay? And then we go to 23rd. Where an agent, this question you need to understand. Where an agent with express authority mean length authority enters into a contract with a, with a third party so basically agent is representing his principal but he is making a contract with a third party on behalf of his principal and a third party knows he is an agent who will the law recognize as parties to that uh, contract for example I am representing Sukhvinder I am the agent, but I am making all her decisions. And I am selling her a property of Amarjit. So the contract will be between me and Amarjit or between Sukhvinder and Amarjit? Between Sukhvinder and Amarjit. So, so there are no names are given here. So, so, so it is number third, the principal and the third part. Okay? Principal and third part, so number three. And the 24, if there is no listing contract, had no listing in existence, but the agent affects a sale of the principal. Property at the request of the principal, the court will. <coughs> there is no listing, but somebody tells me, you know, make a deal for me. Can I sue him for commission? Yes. Can I, I can still take him, can charge him a commission. That's my job. Only way I get paid is the commission. So it's number two, imply a promise to pay the agent remuneration. What does it mean? Compensation. And then we go to the question number 25, right? Paul signed a power of attorney giving Audrey the right to sell his sailboat for a minimum price is 25. Power of attorney, sell my this for 25,000. Order sold the boat to Thija for 20,000. So can she sue for damages? Yes. Yeah. So Paul would succeed against order for damages for breach of agency contract. Okay. But if if he is pleased, so then is a ratification. Yeah. You understand, right? Yes. So it's number one. <coughs> number 26. An agent's authority can be created retroactively by his principle by an action call what do we call retroactively ratification, ratification. so number two so th then we go to question number 39 from 26 to 39 39 we did already right yeah. yes 39 is three then we go to 27 which of the following would be relevant in determining whether an individual was an employee or an agent Number one, the contract between a contract which exists between the alleged agent and the alleged principal. So highlight contract. So contract tells us tells us whether you are an employee or an agent. Number two, degree of control. So the independent agent works independently. Uh, employee has to go to certain hours. 
so degree of control tell us right third method of remuneration employee gets a paycheck and the agent gets his commission so is all of the above so number 4 and then we go to 28 where a principal adopts a contract so adopt means <coughs> accept which his agent entered into without any authority what do we call it third the agent is given authority retroactively to enter into the contract so retroactively means ready vacation so is number third then we go to 34 from 28 to 34 is a repeat we don't have to repeat here so 34 is number 3 is the repeat answer is number 3 okay and then we go to 29 <coughs> and 29 we will do in the next one